A popular Roseville restaurant destroyed by fire. We'll take a look at the extent of the damage and tell you what the future holds for its employees. Good evening, I'm Ed Crane. This devastating fire broke out at Rubio's Mexican Grill on Douglas Boulevard. Here you can see the intense flames from the ground and within minutes this fire spread through the restaurant. Firefighters are still investigating the cause of the fire. But to really get a full sense of the damage, you have to see it from the air. It really looks this building unrecognizable as a former restaurant. You can see how the fire melted everything inside, making this business a total loss. The restaurant manager, though, is hopeful that two other Rubios in the Roseville area will be able to absorb the employees who were suddenly displaced because of this fire. Just five hours earlier and less than three miles away, many of the same Roseville fire crews put out a fire at the Red Robin restaurant. At one point, the flames shot through the roof of the restaurant, which is across the street from the Galleria. People inside that restaurant began calling 911, reporting smoke in the kitchen area. Firefighters were quickly able to extinguish the blaze and everyone was safely evacuated. Investigators also looking into the cause of that fire. Now to the death investigation of baby justice. An autopsy is being performed today to learn just how the child died. The baby was found near Knight's Landing in Yolo County yesterday morning hours after his mother was found alive. Investigators also hope to get more information from her. They say she only provided limited details because of her medical condition. Once investigators do find out the cause of death, they will determine just where the case goes from there. Today, more than a dozen state lawmakers are demanding the removal of swastikas from a Sacramento home. This house in the River Park neighborhood features a mock-up of the Israeli flag bearing a Nazi swastika, the powerful symbol of anti-Semitism, which the Nazis used as an icon for propaganda during World War II, at the same time as more than six million Jews were being exterminated in concentration camps. You have a right to deface your own house, but because you have a right to do it, that doesn't make it right. So my colleagues and I call on the owner of this house to voluntarily remove this vulgar display. There was no response from the Sacramento homeowner today, but a small counter protest is in progress outside that home where two men are holding signs showing their support for Israel. A new video released today shows militants destroying historic artifacts in Iraq, some dating back to the 9th century. Turning to the ISIS threat, the terror group burned down the Mosul Public Library, which had been home to more than 8,000 old rare books and manuscripts. ISIS regularly destroys shrines, tombs, and historical landmarks. A new report from a research firm says that while global tablet sales are rising, Apple's iPad market share is slipping. The iPad worldwide market share dropped from 20% between 2013 and 2014. In addition, generic tablet brands outsold both Apple and Samsung tablets for the first time last year. Well, the deadline is approaching for credit card companies to get more secure credit cards in your wallet. The problem is not all of them are ready. A recent survey found the credit card industry is lagging behind its own October 2015 deadline to get microchip enabled credit cards to consumers. The study found just three out of every 10 credit card holders in the U.S. have been issued a chip enabled card. Well, in Flagstaff, Arizona, officials are working to restore an Internet outage which left people across the northern part of the state without access to the web. During the outage, businesses couldn't process credit card transactions, ATMs didn't function, law enforcement databases were unavailable, and even weather reports were affected. Police say they did find a fiber optic cable that was completely cut through. Tonight, there is a major lawsuit over dog food. People claim that Purina may be selling food that can poison their pets. The class action lawsuit questions two main ingredients in Purina's Benefil brand. One ingredient used to retain moisture is also found in antifreeze. The other ingredient is a toxic byproduct of fungus found in grains. Some owners fear those ingredients may be killing their pets. He had a seizure in the living room. I picked him up and carried him outside and he, he died in my arms. Um, it was awful. Other owners have reported pets that ate the food, had kidney failure, or suffered dehydration. Nestle Purina says the lawsuit is baseless. Courts had previously dismissed two similar cases. And an update now on the pair of llamas that went on the lam in Phoenix. We showed you video earlier of the llamas running wild through the city. The white and black animals darting past cars and outran the Maricopa County Sheriff's deputies who tried to corral them, but they were eventually lassoed. It was just unknown where the llamas came from or where they were going. 
NASA is getting ready for an out-of-this-world auction. Hundreds of vintage photos taken from space will be sold to the highest bidder. That includes this selfie that astronaut Buzz Aldrin snapped during a spacewalk. There's also this iconic shot of astronaut Neil Armstrong, which he snapped on the moon. 600 other photos like it going up for auction in London. Each could sell for anywhere from 500 bucks to $15,000. Also in space, a new discovery made on the dwarf planet Ceres. NASA released a new image taken last week by the Dawn spacecraft of Ceres. The image reveals that a series so-called bright spot has a dimmer companion that appears to be on the same basin. Dawn is expected to enter Ceres' orbit early next month. Ceres is the largest object in the so-called asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And a California couple may have celebrated their recent wedding anniversary by creating a new Guinness World Record. You're not going to believe this. The couple went to Disneyland in Tokyo, Anaheim, and Disney World in Florida all in one day. They first went to Tokyo Disneyland, then jetted off to Los Angeles at 5 p.m. And due to the 16-hour time difference, they got to LAX at 9 a.m. the same day. Once there, they ran into Disneyland at Anaheim for one minute, took a picture, and ran right back out to catch a six-hour flight to Florida. I guess it really is a small world after all. And I got to do it with my wife, my best friend, on Valentine's Day, and can't argue with that. In just under 28 hours, the couple traveled nearly 8,000 miles. Representatives with Disney Parks confirmed no one else has ever attempted what they have submitted for the Guinness World Book of Records, and they're waiting for a response. Coming up, a wild ride from a man who slides out of his car during a crash, and it's all caught on tape. You'll see it when we come back.